Um, so, so uh, who's running his own startup here? Um, those who are not running a startup, raise your hand. Because <laughs> that, that would be a minority. Uh, startups has been a hit things here. So, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, you stay startup, people don't even know what's a startup. But um, I'm here not talking about startup today. I mean, we have got more than enough startup uh, articles, videos, and all that. Uh, I'm here more on the philosophy on the whole problem and risk management. Uh, I can't tell much about risk management because uh, usually I look at, uh, I, don't, I rarely do risk management and then when it's a problem, then solve it for me. Uh, that's basically what we do. Alright, so has anyone of you seen this image before? Um, does it come like? Yeah. Has anyone seen this before? Alright, uh, don't Google it, but if you, uh, after this you can Google it. It's a very famous uh, experiment. It's called the candlelight problem. Alright, now this is my start of my presentation. I want you to figure out how do you fix the light, a candle, on the wall in a way so that the wax does not drip on the table. So as you see, you have a box of uh, thumbtacks here, you have some matches and you have a candle here. So you are, the, the, the whole instruction is here. Throughout my talk, try to figure it out. I'll ask you uh, for, for some, some ideas after the talk. So problems is the main thing that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, not, not so much on risk management, as I said earlier. Usually, we think of problem as problem, and then we get a solution, but things aren't so easy. Usually, we have to go around and around like a maze to figure out the actual solution. Because usually you look at a problem and then it's like, oh, this is the right solution, you try, it doesn't work, you try and it doesn't work again. So the problem, about, the problem about having a problem is, especially as an engineer myself, uh, it is not so clear. Uh, what I actually wrote here is, when you finding a problem for a solution, it's not equal to finding a solution for a problem. Let me give you an example. Let's say you are the caveman. Imagine you are the caveman. You are the first person who invented the wheel. Take that. You are the first person who invented the wheel. And the first product that you make, gosh, this wheel is so great, I'm going to make a skateboard. Do you think it will be a very successful company? Do you all think it will be a successful company? I mean, we all know skateboards are cool now. But think of back then, the, the when wheel is not even invented. Do people really need a skateboard? So for, that's come back to my thing is, when finding a problem for a solution is not equal to finding a solution for a problem is, because usually when we have a solution and we go all out and excited, oh, this solution can be applied to here, 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 and we just randomly pick one, and we just apply our solution, assuming that this thing can just fit in. But the reality is not like that. And this method of solving problems is called the, the, the solution shotgun. You just take one solution and just, just try to apply it everywhere. If you, like this situation, you apply it to a skateboard, it's going to be absolutely failure because people don't need a skateboard at that time. What people need is actually a, a, a better trolley, a better transportation, uh, a better uh, way of uh, going from A, point A to point B. So the problem here is it's about identifying problem. It's not about identifying solution first. It's about finding the right problem that you're trying to solve and be really, really focused on your problem. Because what happens is, um, oftentimes I see company that they see as problem, they found a solution, and then they think that, oh my, this solution can be applied to problem A, and it's okay, problem, problem B, and problem C, and then you lose focus. And that's the end of the company, because you lose focus. You only have a few people in the company. And you lose focus, that's the end of it. You have to be really, really focused, because the next thing you're gonna do is, that's your solution. Is the problem that you're trying to solve really, really the problem? You don't know. You, you can only try to solve it with your solution. So the next thing I'm going to say is actually identify problem. Um, so this is one of the problems. So you have a battery. 
you have a switch, you have a light here, over here. How do you solve this problem? Um, you? How would you try to identify? Let's say you push the switch and the lights doesn't turn on. How do you? What, what do you think is the problem? Battery. Battery. Okay. What do you think? The wire. The wire. Yeah. Okay. The box. So I have three different answers here. The battery, the switch, the box, which is all three possibilities. So these three, all three could be a problem, but you don't know which one is the problem. What, what if the car is broke down? Do you know the problem? You don't know. So all you know is that the car broke down, and then you try to punch in different solutions. It's like, I'm going to change the battery, I'm going to change da 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 If you don't have mechanic, of course, it's easier to get the whole car. But you're going to punch in different solutions. But what is the different thing that mechanic did compared to us? Mechanic, what we did is they identified a core problem. It's all about finding the core problem. What you all three said here just now, it's absolutely correct. But how do you articulate this tree? What I mean is, the same thinking principle that you all applied just now can be applied when you are trying to fix the car. So what is the tree mean principle? Um, so sorry here that the slides is really, really awful here. What I mean here is the problem can be separated into three portions. The input, the process, and the output. So what you have here is the battery is the input. The switch and the wires are the process. And finally, the light bulb is the output. When you split down a problem into these three sections, you are able to solve and identify the problem very quickly. This applies to not just fixing mechanical, electrical, or engineering stuff. This applies to even startups when you are, oh, I say I'm not going to talk about startups. Um, when you're going to run your own company and try to create a solution. Because it's just like how you fix a car without understanding the car, you're going to start a company without understanding the problem that you're going to solve. So, identify a problem is the very, very first step. It's about finding the problem. So the first thing is not the solution, it's finding the problem first. So what you do, of course, all we know is like we go for surveys, you know, stand in front of a, uh, places and try to talk to people and guess away. That's one way to do it, but that's just one example. But I want you all to know is this is the very, very good step because you're identifying problem. Don't go all out and my solution is the best in the world and I'm here to save it. No. Most probably your solution is not going to fit. Your solution is a good solution, mind you. It's a very good solution. It's just that you're applying it in the wrong problem that you're trying to solve. Think, use this method to think when you're trying to solve a problem. Okay, come back to candlelight problem. If you want to split it down into input, process, and the output. So, the input is <coughs> The match, the process is the thumbtack, and the output is the candle. <coughs> because the candle light, you need the match to match up the light, and then you need thumbtack. Um, have any one of you have a quick solution to this already? How to fix and light the candle on the wall in a way so that the wax does not drip on the table? What is that? Any? I'm sure you got one. It's just better you're not sure at this right now. I will just move the table. Just move the table. Yeah. But it it's going to drip on the table. The whole thing is about the wax not drip on the table. Good, good one. Good try. Anyone else? So when you see, when you have a problem, it's you really have to look deep into it. What's the real problem here? Let's identify it. The core problem here is the candle wax won't drip on the table and then it must be on the wall. Out of all these solutions here, this input, process, output, what is one thing that will make sure that it does not drip on the table? The answer is the box. The box that is holding the thumbtacks. The box is going to make sure that the, the, the candle wax does not drip on the table. So now you've got one solution for one big problem really. What's the next problem that you're facing? How to get 
the candle on the wall. Well, on top of my head is of course use a thumbtack, stick through a candle and stuck it on the wall. That's one way, but it's gonna drip on the on, on the on the table anyway. So remember that we found one solution earlier, then you mix up, then you join two solutions together, which is I pump pack the box on the wall and then I light the candle candle on the box. That's how you make it um, the the light does not drip on the on, on the table. So that this is a very famous candlelight experiment. Uh, but the the original intention of this experiment is not what I'm talking about today. Uh, the original intention is to get people think out of the box, as in a lot of people see only light thumbtack and uh, matches, and they did not see the box. This is the original intention of the of this candlelight problem. But I saw it, and then I just think that uh, it's a very good exercise to actually look into your problem and figure out a solution to it. I guess that's all that I want to share. Uh, it's all about breaking down problem. Whatever solution that you're trying to do, don't think of the solution first. Make sure you are doing the right problem, working on the right problem first. So, uh, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. To me, startup, main, 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 main purpose of startup is to solve a problem. If you are here to make, just glorify yourself, if you are here thinking of getting a big box out of it, if you are here thinking that you will get you featured in papers, or if you are here thinking that um, it's gonna get you retired early, um, most probably you may be wrong. Startups is here because we really, really believe that we are trying to solve a problem and most probably none of what I say just now will happen but if I have a crystal ball in front of me that I can see in the future whatever I'm doing now is going to fail I will still be willing to try because I want to make sure that what I try, I will learn what happens after next, I will improve and I will make sure I get this problem solved that's the main thinking of a good startup. Uh, that's all I have about to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eric, for sharing. Very inspiring. So uh, please remain on stage. Some people uh, describe uh, Park Easy as a disruptive uh, startup. Okay. Like you, you are actually changing the way people play the game. Okay, so. So you guys are expecting to receive uh, tons of critics, right, I suppose. So how you guys actually prepare to face all these challenges, all the critics and uh, all the non-agreeing and objection and all that? Um, it, it, it boils down to identifying a problem. Is critics our problem? Not exactly. No, critics aren't exactly our problems. In fact, critics is a it's a good thing to us because it gives us more input. You know, critics, comments, suggestion, uh, point of view, whatever you call it, with our input, so that we have better output. So critics aren't exactly our problem. In fact, we deal with it very very properly. Is we actually look through every single comment. Uh, what we found out that most of these people's comments are constructive, as in they don't say we are not good just by saying not good. They're going to say not good, either they say why is it not good, or some go one step further and suggest a better way of doing it. Uh, but what we realize is most of these comments are made because they haven't fully understood our solution, uh, fully understandable because we haven't even launched it. But what I'm really, really glad is it shows how much this problem concerns to people that this problem, how deeply it is that one small star article could end up so hugely because this is what really people has. Very good that you guys actually see me as a very positive way. Very good. So any questions? If not, then I have a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, hi, Eric. Uh, I'm really so, it's okay. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, the part you see is something like uh, apps, standard car apps, like, like that. So yeah, your, your main uh, 
by all means talk to us. We will never copy your idea. We will just try to connect you to the right people, grow you, and then we will work with you. Uh, so our priority is like minimal. We, we avoid uh, competitors by all means. If you are in uh, other countries, what we do is we we either uh, license our product to use when they run, or uh, somehow, some way, we acquire you. Or no. But the main philosophy is no startup should ever compete. We are already small enough. So if you still want to compete, then that's the end. <coughs> Find a way to be partners, to be friends, and yeah, grow together. Right? about uh, team management already, right? Like how you actually manage your your team so that everyone has the same vision and then go the same direction. I guess if the problem is big enough, like a parking problem, this one, we don't need to do much. Everyone is like, um, Eric, when are you going to go to this, this, this mall? Um, I just went to it that day and I spent one hour looking for parking. So the experience kind of reminds it themselves why are they parking easy. Why, why, why work in a startup? Why get a smaller team? Uh, why join a smaller team? Why not climb to the corporate ladder and stuff like that? Because we are here to make a change. So you have a very good team. Everyone has the same vision. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, the company is not the company. The company is the people. So the philosophy here is um, our company has three main things that we are, we are aiming. The people, the product, Profit in that order, as in it's not randomly treated in that order. People first, then the product, then the profit. Without people, we won't get a product. Without product, we won't get a profit. So it's never profit first. It's it's the people first. How big is your team? I I see like photos inside the photos, a very big team, right? Um. Yes, because part easy. Uh, as much as I don't want it to be, it's actually a very 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 complicated solution. Um. It's, it's not another company that usually I produce, it's not another company that. Uh, we have hardware, we have software, then we have hardware software, then we have a lot of third party hardware. That, all these technical solutions are very difficult. Uh, team, we have 16 people now, where everyone is like the only person in that field. So we are like a chain. So no one is like, is like sick in the cold bench type. Everyone is like, like everyone is linked together. Like if there's something coming up, like they have to have to work it out. If they don't work it out, everyone gets stuck. So we have a large team. That's true. But uh, everyone is working together, and it's because of the team that uh, we sort of have a little bit of results that we are very happy about. Uh, you haven't seen it because you all seen it like much, but. Uh, it's very, very, very good team. Uh, yes, you're right. Is one thing is uh, your company is your team. Your company is not yourself. Your company is a team. Without a team, without a company. So it's your team that's the most important thing. So Tabizi has sixteen <coughs> departments. Right? <laughs> Everyone has a, a different role. Yeah, like okay. no one is duplicated. <laughs> so unique. So, any other questions? Crowd today is very quiet. Basically, like um, because just now, just now, this gentleman asked about like if let's say some other people park your people uh, parking lot. So how you actually like solve it? Because if this problem keep uh, repeating, keep happening, it will actually affect your reputation and uh, yeah, people will not be confident in your products anymore. So how you actually solve this? Uh, so risk management. 
Yeah. We, what we do now is um, we only solve it when we actually see it as a problem. Here's the funny thing. We actually run a closed beta already. As some of you may know. Uh, we posted it on Facebook. We actually run a closed beta. Uh, as in, that's like 50 over people were like the lucky pick and actually try out the product uh, in a mall in Banda or something. We can't name them. So, a mall there. So, what we realized is only around a couple percent of people who actually will legally park. The rest will actually see it and throw it. And uh, well, some is they didn't know what that for. They parked and then they started beeping an alarm. We, we actually have that. And then once they see that, they're like, oh, he turned and they, they go away. And they, uh, the actual user actually gets parked after that. Um, user learning curve is huge here. I guess we have to move forward. Think of self-checkout kiosks in the Tesco. Have you went to IYCT mall? People have to move. We have to move forward as a whole. Uh, we can only do it if everyone works together. You are right to say that if everyone started parking our way, then there will be a very big problem. But we haven't seen that yet. It's an assumption. Which is another killer in any company. Uh, assumptions, it will be your, your killing. Uh, it's an assumption, and don't build a solution for an assumption, an assumed problem. We, we don't think how to solve this. We, we think and we test. Like thinking, testing, then measuring, then solve. So, um, so we run a test for, for a month, like almost a month. Um, some of you will be like, uh, hey, what is this LED sign doing there? And they'll be like, curious. But the people will be really fucked. Um, where is your this uh, testing ground? Maybe we all can go and test out. And I see how 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 loud is the beeping, and whether it, it annoys me or not. I like can just run away and then come back after my movie, right? Currently, <laughs> the close beta is over because why it's only for a short period only. Uh, because uh, it's it's we are actually like studying the people thinking it's a really stuff. But that's only for like a month. Now now we close and close. You won't see that sign anymore. Now okay. we can run but we are looking to launch somewhere around March. Um, so by that time, like all your questions, your questions will be solved. Mm -hmm. So your your method is like uh, we we run the the thing first. We will see how people react. Then from we solve there, it. yes, we solve it. Maybe right? Maybe people can accept it before they actually try it. But now because people yet to try it, so a lot of questions and a lot of assumptions. Yeah. So they will move forward first. Right? Hi. Now I have a question. So you solve the problems only when they occur, when they're proven yes. to occur. Uh, do you feel that you might lose time solving problems which... Uh, I, would rather, I would rather lose time doing that yeah. than lose time solving a problem that does not exist. Okay, so you don't believe in anticipating... Uh, no, no you, don't, you don't solve a problem that you're not proven yet. Okay. Uh, unless you get it proved. But, but what's your process like to plan with it? Sorry? What's your process like to plan with it? Uh, you have a... I, I guess... Uh, the engineering is still in me, la, so it's hypothesis, then testing, <laughs> then actually. So, uh, I don't know. Come on, you guys went through it science before, right? <laughs> so it's, it's all about proving the problem. Uh, before doing anything, it's about proving the problem. So, like a car, if you can't start, I guess the first thing, if you're an engineer, the first thing you prove is whether the battery is running or not, which probably the battery is dead. Something like that. True? <laughs> No point calling the battery uh, battery to you. I think that's the start of call battery to you. Uh, battery to you, yes. The call change still cannot start. Yeah. That, that's when you solve, when you go for you, um, you make a solution for a problem that does not exist. Uh, that's, that's one of the very uh, easy to understand way. I, I used to run an experiment before. Uh, so our assumption is shy, right? I mean, our assumption is shy. 
So I run an experiment for it, and, and I like give papers to every one of them. Uh, you don't have to ask me question. Mm -hmm. Just pass the paper, and uh, actually that's how it, it is true that when you people don't actually have to talk, mm -hmm. they pass paper. It actually works. Yeah. It's actually a startup idea, and this can create an anonymous um, idea sharing. There is already exist, but mm -hmm. just so you all know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Very good idea. So next time I can actually like ask you guys to. To, to give the, the, the notes to us. So we pick from there uh, good questions and bad questions and then we sing. Yeah, that's, right? that's the thing. You, you can see a good question and you answer. Uh, this question, you don't know how to answer. Okay, uh, <laughs> good, good, good. Happy, right? good, good. Yeah, I got a new idea today. Cool. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay alright. Thank you so much. Thank you.